Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be reviewing the Army Painters complete paint set that contains 124 different war paints. It also contains 5 free brushes and as you can see it has a massive range of paints in this set and if you pause the video you can have a look at some of the different colours in this collection. I also want to say a huge thank you to the Army Painter for sending me out this box set for review. If you look below uh, at the bottom of this video, you'll see a little notification saying Tap Nerd. Now, if you enter that into um, the Army Painter's website as you're buying your products, you'll save 10% off your order. This offer is redeemable up to the 31st of December. So as we open up the box, we can see that we've got our five free brushes. Now the Army Painter brushes have triangular handles, which are really comfortable to hold whilst painting your miniatures. Here you can see they have the uh, Psycho or Insane Detail brush, if you like. And here we have the Army Painter's Wargaming uh, Terrain or Vehicle Dry Brush. Here we have the Army Painter's Regiment Brush. And here we have the Army Painter's Small Dry Brush. Last but not least, we have the Wargamer Detail Brush. If you're relatively new to Wargaming, the starter guide that you get in the box is really nice. It's on glossy uh, material uh, paper and you can see that it's going over some of the key techniques like using green stuff, priming and painting your miniatures so it's a really great starter guide uh, for the complete novice. As we can see from the box, it is chock full of paints, guys. 124 to be precise. And the cool thing with the Army Painter paints is they have color coded uh, lids. So uh, we have the white for the paints and effect paints, we have black for the washes or the quick shades, we have black for the metallics. And there you can see we have that white cap for the effect paints as well. And the effect paints all say effects uh, in big letters at the bottom. And here you can see we have all the effect paints that are in the set. So first of all we can see we have gloss varnish. We have anti-shine matte varnish. Quick Shade Wash Mixing Medium, War Paints Mixing Medium, Glistening Blood, Brush on Primer, Wet Mud, Dry Rust, and Disgusting Slime. Here we have all the quick shades, so we have mid brown, red tone, green tone, soft tone, flesh wash, blue tone, purple tone, dark tone, strong tone and light tone, military shader, here are all the metallics so we start with greedy gold, true copper, rough iron, bright gold, shine plate male metal, Gunmetal, Shining Silver, 
and weapon bronze. Here we have all the paints from the set. Now I'm not going to go through individually on every single one of these paints as the video would go on forever guys. But as you can see it's a fantastic range with many many different paints. Here I'm pointing out that some of the paints are 100% colour matched to their spray can uh, primers. And here you can see uh, there's 100% match to pure red. So what that basically means is if you um, paint um, with their primers and then you need to do touch-ups, you can use the paint to get a 100% match. Let's test out one of the paints. I just picked up a random paint and it's very important that you shake your paints thoroughly. I add a couple of stainless steel ball bearings to each of the pots. Now it's really important, I say it once and I'll say it again guys, to thoroughly shake these paints. You need the medium and the pigments to be thoroughly mixed to give a really nice even smooth coverage while you're painting. So as you can see, I'm placing a few of these stainless steel ball bearings and I have to emphasize guys that these are good quality stainless steel ball bearings and they won't rust in the paint pots whereas some uh, lesser quality ones will. So make sure you do your research and get the correct ones uh, that won't rust inside the uh, paint pots. You can also use glass beads and then you don't have to worry about rust at all. Here you can see that the paint comes out onto the palette in a really nice, smooth, creamy consistency. I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of regular water and as you can see it does not break up on the palette even when I keep thinning it down. As you can see the consistency is really nice. Now I'll thin this down roughly one to one with water and you can see it still gives great coverage. It's important to know that I like to paint in nice thin smooth layers and I normally do two to three coats to get a nice smooth even coverage. And as you can see here this is the first pass and it still gives quite a strong coverage. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of Alvin flesh to the palette and as previously I've added some agitators to the bottle and I've thoroughly shaken it. Here I'm just placing the paint onto the miniature. I've added a little water to my brush so it's thinning the paint out a little and you can see it gives great smooth coverage. I am going to paint in another thin layer after this has dried. Now we're going to use cobalt skin, which is a completely different skin tone colour. The reason I'm using two different skin tones is I want to use the flesh wash and show you the different results that you can get by using different flesh tones from this collection.
Now we're going to use the Army Painters Flesh Wash and even though this is thin it's still really important to shake it to make sure that it's mixed thoroughly and you don't get left with an uneven finish. Now I'm going to wash both of the Alvin Flesh and the Cobalt Flesh and you'll see at the end that they both give great results using this one flesh wash colour. And here you can see what they look like dried. It would be advisable to give them a highlight after this, but at this stage they still look really good. So I've just base coated them with the Alvin flesh and the Cobalt flesh and washed them with a flesh wash. And they look fantastic even at this early stage. A lot of people paint over a black primer. I personally prefer to work with grey and white primers and that's my preference but I wanted to show you what the coverage is like over a black primed base. As you can see I'm thinning it down with a little water just to make the paint go on smoother on the surface and alleviate the possibility of leaving brush stroke marks by placing the paint down too thick. But as you can see, even with the thinning down of the paint, it covers absolutely fantastic over black. The great thing about this set is it comes with so many different quick shade tones. Here I'm using the blue tone to wash over the blue that we placed down earlier. It's important to note that a lot of people or beginners wash everything with dark tone or strong tone, whereas it's much better to use the opposing correct colour and you'll get even better results that way. And here you can see what the miniature looks like after having that blue tone applied to it. Now we're going to use Greedy Gold, one of the metallics from the set. I've thoroughly shaken it as before and added some of those ball bearings. And as you can see, it comes out of the bottle really really nice this is quite a thin paint and you don't really need to thin it down too much 
and as you can see it gives great coverage although I will be painting in two thin layers you'll still see that the paint goes down really nicely Here you can see what the miniature looks like after having two thin layers applied to it and you can see that the reflective properties of the metallic is really nice. There's many different quick shade washes that you could use to wash the gold. You could use strong tone, soft tone, uh, but here I believe I'm using flesh wash. And this is still going to give a great wash. And that's the reason I use this one to show you that you can get so many different results by using different quick shades over your metallics. And here we can see what the greedy gold looks like after being washed with the flesh wash and it looks really good. Now we're going to use rough iron which reminds me of a really deep dark bronze. to create an even better effect we're going to dry brush true copper over the rough iron As you can see the effects building up really nicely and looks absolutely fantastic.
Now we're going to use the Army Painters Gunmetal This would work best over a black base, but even so, over a grey primed miniature, it still gives really nice coverage. Now we're going to wash dark tone over the miniature to give it some definition. And here you can see what the miniature looks like after the dark tone has been applied and it really makes that metallic come to life. Now we're going to use one of the effect paints called Glistening Blood. This is a really glossy finish uh, to it and I like to sponge chip this uh, effect paint onto my miniatures just to give uh, a effect of splattered blood Now we're going to combine two effect paints to create a really effective and authentic looking rust. I'm going to apply the rust onto the palette and the anti-shine matte varnish. I'm going to thin it down and mix them together and create a special rust like wash. It's better to get the rust into the cracks and crevices of your miniature as this is how rust would authentically form. You'll see the results in a moment and I'm sure you'll find them quite convincing. As you can see the rust has dried now and it looks really authentic and using the anti-shine matte varnish really gives that rust a very dry and matte finish.
Here I've added Dragon Red to the lenses of the miniature. I'm going to use gloss varnish effect paint to paint over the lenses to give them a really cool look to make them look very authentic and like real lenses and they'll catch the light which will look really cool. Here you can see what the effect's done. It's really give a glistening and lens-like effect to the eyes of the Space Marine. Now we're going to use the wet mud effect. As you can see, I'm applying this neat to the base and it's covering really, really well indeed. Allowing the wet mud to dry, here you can see the effect of the mud once it's dry. I'm going to create another effect using strong tone wash and gloss varnish together. Here you can see that I'm mixing the gloss varnish with the strong tone and this is going to be placed over the wet mud. This is going to really make that base come to life and give it a really authentic looking wet base. Now we're going to use brush on primer. It's very important that you prime your miniatures before painting. What you'll find if you don't is that sometimes the paints will bead and bunch up on the surface of the miniature, which you don't want. But as you can see, the primer applies onto the miniature absolutely fantastic and it covers really well.
this is what the miniature looks like after the brush on primer has dried and here I'm going to apply some dragon red just to show you that it's going to cover over absolutely beautifully over the primed miniature. So in total guys this is a fantastic value set and if you shake the paints thoroughly and add agitators you'll have no problems whatsoever painting with these paints as I find that the most common problem is that people aren't shaking or thoroughly mixing the paints correctly. This paint set, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is a limited edition set, so please go over to the Army Painters website, I'll put a link in the description box down below, and use that Alt Painter Nerd special code, TAP NERD, and get your 10% discount. Lastly guys, I want to say a huge thank you once again to the Army Painter, and thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this long video, and I'll catch you in the next one.